Hey, Amy. Yeah, Juan. Give me that beat. It's Baseball Shangri-La with Amy Cuevas and Juan Ramirez. What's up, party people? She is Amy Cuevas and I am Juan Ramirez and you are listening or watching Baseball Shangri-La. If you are listening to us on the audio portion, please make sure you're subscribed to the podcast. Rate us, write us a review, help spread the word. If you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel. Hit that notification button. Give us a thumbs up. Leave us comments. We love engaging with you. And most importantly, make sure you're following us on social media on X at BB Shangri-La, on Instagram, YouTube, and Twitch at Baseball Shangri-La. Amy, ¿cómo estás? Hi, it's it's been like five years since I talked to you. Yeah, long time no see. Uh, Amy, um, it looked, I mean, the All-Star, at the time we're dropping this episode, the All-Star game will be one week away, and it was just a, announced over the weekend who made the All-Star team, and the Dodgers have six All-Stars at the moment, at the time of this recording, so, Amy, you want to let us know who these all-stars are for the Doyers? Yeah, so a couple stats to kind of head that off. So out of the 30 clubs, kind of what you were just alluding to, uh, the Dodgers have the second most at this point on Tuesday, so six, and then the Phillies have seven, so they have the most. But this is the third time since 2017 that the Dodgers have have led with, with six players going, and I think I saw a stat that this is their fifth straight season that they have five or more players. So pretty, pretty outstanding for these guys. Um, we saw that that Shohei is going in for the designated hitter. Um, Tyler Glass now is going in for pitching. This was his first time getting the nod. Um, Will Smith is going for his second time. And then Mookie Betts, who's obviously injured, he he's going in as shortstop, but it's his eighth time going, um, but the, his first time at the shortstop position. Oscar Hernandez is going in as an outfielder his second time as well. And Freddie Freeman is going for first base in his eighth time that he's been chosen. Yeah. So all that complaining that took place because Will Smith, I, I will say, I want to take the time right now to acknowledge I am not for the shaming, the all-star uh, voting shaming that was going on. I, I thought that was bad form to tell you the truth. And not only, you know, coming from Roberts, but other Dodger fans shaming, you know, not only Dodger fans, but baseball fans in general for not voting for Will Smith. And or, it's or funny Wookie I, didn't, I didn't take the, the Dave Roberts thing as shaming. <laughs> just. Yeah, I, I mean, I, maybe I was just reading too much into it and or being sensitive to it, but I, I, I just felt we are like, both entitled to our perspectives. I, it just, and and maybe I am reading it wrong, but it almost because they're taking the Dodger fans to task uh, for not voting in these guys as starters I, in a in a way, and maybe this is not true, but to me it feels like it's dismissing everybody else's opinion. And this is the other reason that I have with it. If you're trying to, I know that the Dodgers, I believe, worldwide overtook the Yankees as the most popular team in Major League Baseball. I don't know if that's changed or if it's been updated and the Yankees have retaken it. But I know I think it was I think it was a social media following that they were basing it off of. And I know when they signed Otani, that's when the Dodgers took over. So if what people are saying is based on that. Are you telling me then that the Dodgers have more fans than all 29 other major league baseball teams combined? No way. And, and so that's why I have an issue with the shaming of the all-star voting, because it's just like, how is the Dodgers who is just one fan base supposed to outnumber all 29 other teams? And so the fans of all 29 other teams, their opinion doesn't matter. I feel it's on the same lines where people are upset that every team has to have a representative. And it's just like, nobody cares about the Kansas city Royals or, you, you know, know who that. cares the Kansas city Royal fans. <laughs> yeah. And so I've heard this argument. I was having this conversation with this guy and he was just like, dude, 
and Kansas City Royals fans aren't tuning into the All Star Game because they have to see their Kansas City Royal uh, uh, teammate. And I was like, I, I don't know, man, because I remember when I was a kid when the Dodgers, the Dodgers were terrible. They were just terrible. And Mike Sharperson was the only guy that made the team, the All Star team for the Dodgers. So when I watched the All Star Game, and probably you know this isn't supporting my argument because I was going to watch the All Star Game regardless. But I was glad I was like, and I was also a kid, but when I saw Mike Sharperson come into the game, I was like, all right, our Dodger, you know, our Dodger representative is in there. But I, I feel like there's there's this, I don't want to say misunderstanding, where like, I, I get it. I There are many people who are fans of baseball. I am a fan of baseball, but I love the Dodgers. That is what I focus on. I'm trying to broaden my horizons this year. And, and get to know other players better. Like, I mean, I we see them as we play them throughout the year, right? But I also feel like the the All-Star game is an opportunity to see some of those other players. So, like, if because it's, yes, it's competitive. Yes, the, the, all, the American League has won more years than not, and the National League won for the first time last year. But, like, I'm watching to see these guys on the field. Like, I love seeing my guys there. But it's not like they're consistently playing throughout the game. Everybody gets an inning here and there. And so it's it really is just an opportunity to celebrate baseball and see all these other great players around the league. So even though I'm happy our six guys are going as of as of Monday and Tuesday, it's still an opportunity to be happy for all of these great players in the game. Yeah. So, I mean, of the of the six that got in for the Dodgers, I don't I mean, those are the six that we think deserved it. I know there's been a lot of conversation that the the person that got the short end of the stick was Gavin Stone. Uh, that And look, here's the thing is, Gavin Stone still might make it because Chris Sale, who made the All-Star team for the Bravos, I believe is pitching that Sunday before the All-Star. I think he's pitching twice this week. So if he pitches twice this week, there's no way he's going to be able to pitch in the All-Star game. So there's going to be replacements. We don't know what injuries. So there is but still I, a chance. I think that's part of a larger conversation around Gavin Stone, though, because he's not really getting credit across the league in general for what he's doing. It's kind of like he's flying under the radar, but he's actually got a pretty good record where you don't hear him talked about in most circles. Like, yes, we're hearing about Paul Skeens. He's, you know, technically Gavin Stone is a rookie, too. So it's it's just interesting the amount of hype that, certain players are getting and, and Gavin Stone is you, you barely hear about him. Well, I think the, the thing is, and we benefit from the fact that we watch the Dodgers every single game. And I, and I feel, I don't want to be too critical of national media guys because I think their job is, is has a level of difficulty because as much as they want, and I know they rely a lot on, on people who do cover the teams day to day to give them information. But it's just not possible for you to watch every single team every day, right? So I feel because we get to see Gavin Stone every day, we get to see how efficient he is. We get to see the season he's having. If you don't watch the Dodgers every day, I don't think Gavin Stone is sexy. I don't think Gavin Stone is somebody who's going to catch your attention because, for example, he doesn't have the same strikeout numbers that Tyler Glasnow has. And that is eye popping, you know, to see the strikeouts that Tyler Glasnow is is putting up. But if you look at the numbers, even with the bad outing that Gavin Stone had uh, against the Serpientes this week, he has a better ERA. He has a better mm -hmm. ERA than Tyler Glasnow. Now, the issue at hand is Tyler Glasnow has thrown more innings. He has more strikeouts. He has a better whip than Gavin Stone. So if you're looking at the Dodgers pitchers, yeah, I think they did the right thing. And you take Tyler Glass now over Gavin Stone. Uh, but like I said, I think there's still an opportunity that Gavin Stone could be named an all-star. And then the Dodgers will have seven all-stars to match the Phillies. Well, and, and yeah, no, I totally get that. I guess I just, for me, it, it feels like he's getting overlooked in, in larger conversations as far as pitching. But, you know. It is what it is. No, I, I agree with you. But like I said, he, I don't think. We saw it happen with, I know he's kind of disgraced right now, but 
Julio Urias too. Like he would, he would have a, a stellar season, or at least, you know, a start to it, but he wouldn't really be part of any of the conversations that were going on around the league. And, you know, he's quietly just pitching really well and we don't hear about that. So I wonder, you know, I wonder what factors go into more of those national conversations when we're looking at things like that. Yes. I, I mean, I think that's you probably every year you can have the conversation that we're going to have, especially when it comes to to snubs. But one of the fascinating things that I, I was witness to was this conversation when they announced the starter, the, the pitchers for the American League. And it was obvious that this person was a casual baseball fan. He was not a diehard. And this guy started reading off all the pitchers that were in the American League. And this guy, I overheard this conversation. Yes, I was eavesdropping. I overheard the conversation, and the other guy had no clue who any of these pitchers were. He was naming off Corbin Burns. He was naming off Skirball. And to me, I was just like, is that a problem? Is that a good thing? Or is it, why doesn't he know any of these American League pitchers? Like Crochet of the White Sox, he had no clue who that was. He had never heard of them. He didn't know who Tyler Anderson. Again, this is, he was a casual baseball fan. And I think the All-Star game is one of those things that you try to see. Can you bring in the casual baseball fan to watch the All-Star game? And that's where you have the question that we were talking about, where, if you are a fan of the Kansas City Royals, will you watch because you want to see your player? And if you didn't have a representative, does that mean as a casual fan, well, nobody on the Royals is uh, in the All-Star game. Why Why should I watch it? Well, and that's, that's endemic of the problem that we're having, right? You're trying to grow baseball and get it beyond the casual fan. but and th And that's no shade to casual fans because everybody gets to experience their fandom however they want. We don't know what's going on in anybody's life that, you know, maybe I just like to check in with baseball here and there. And that's enough for me because I have other hobbies. It, it, everybody gets to do what they want. And even if somebody else is reading off the list and they don't know who those pitchers are, like it, you're going to have people who experience different levels. Not everybody's going to be a fanatic and, and that's okay. Maybe that, like you said, this is going to give them the opportunity to see those people. And, you know, maybe, maybe they'll see more of them around the league or now I'm going to recognize this person's name. Because admittedly, I, sometimes I know a lot of the players because we've either played against them or, you know, or we've we've had them on our team and they've been traded away or they've left for other reasons, free agency, whatnot. So I feel like in that respect, everybody kind of experiences the game however they, you, you know, they can. And so this is where the All-Star game means a lot of things, a lot of different things to a lot of people. Uh, absolutely. Um, I know that you wanted to talk about why not? Because uniforms have been an issue all year long. I know you want to talk about the all-star uniforms. So, yeah. So I kind of want to start in reverse and then maybe go into the uniforms themselves because um, the athletic had an article about it, but Manfred had a quote uh, basically like backing up why he prefers the generic Nike look that we're about to get into. But his quote was, I never thought that a baseball team wearing different jerseys in a game was a particularly appealing look for us which I think is a very interesting comment to make when a lot of fans, or at least maybe the fans that I interact with and that you hear from, none of us like these solid colored jerseys. So if the, like, okay, I get that you're the commissioner, but it just seems a little out of touch. Like, no, nobody likes them. <laughs> uh, in terms of a design, yeah, I don't think they're appealing. I don't think it's anything I would buy. But I've always been a fan. I, that, to me, is what I've always associated the All-Star game with, is that they wear their own team's uniform, right? Mm -hmm. Because this is supposed to be a representation of all of Major League Baseball. So I, I've always like that idea i liked it in the nba i i loved when the nba wore all their own i mean i was never throw a, a new fan. patch on it and i'll you know maybe i'll buy an all-star jersey but i want an all-star dodgers jersey i don't want what they're peddling with this national league american league which have yeah. you have you seen them i have seen them you sent me the picture and it's just one of those things Did you cry no i i, I like i said <laughs> I, I think when it came to uniforms 
my heartbreak started when they got rid of Players Weekend, mm-hmm. and I was just like, "Oh no, I'm no longer going to be able to to get a a, a Pour Dick some Mountain out for Players Weekend." <laughs> yeah, I'm never going to be able to get a Dick Mountain jersey anymore. Uh, but with all the stuff that has happened this year with uniforms, I'm just numb to it now. I I, I have no like that's they show unfortunate. It to me. Fortunate you can't be desensitized. We still have to fight the good fight. I, I mean, I didn't like the ones last year in Seattle. No. I, I, that I mean, was when the dry fit got sneakily introduced before yeah. we knew it. And so this year, the national team is going to be wearing dark navy with like teal sleeves and like a little bit on the, the top of the shoulders. And the American League is going to have beige with coral on their sleeves. But you bring up an interesting point because I know that this is all meant to, you know, just to sell jerseys. This is all about just capitalism, right? But you just mentioned if you put an all-star patch on any of those six Dodger players. I'm like, in. Here's you my would money. buy that as mm-hmm. opposed to buying one that says National League. I I, I have a dear friend, uh, and if when he listens to this episode, he's probably going to be upset at me, but I'm going to do it anyways. Oh, no. Uh, I, oh, no. I love you. I, I love you, Joe Houses. Uh, <gasps> oh, it's but, Joe Houses. Joe, Joe Houses, okay. Joe Houses, when the Dodgers were, when the All-Star game was in San Diego, he bought a Clayton Kershaw jersey, but it's in the San Diego colors, right? Mm-hmm. And so we always give him a, a, a hard time because he has this brown Lakers jersey that is is Kobe. So we always like my friends and I, I don't even know why Joe Houses is friends with us, to tell you the truth, because all we do is make fun of him. Uh, but anytime we, we see a uniform that we like, my buddies and I will always sit there and go, oh, I wonder if they make that in brown. Hey, Joe, can you find out if they make that in brown? I, I'd like to get it in brown. But there is something whenever I definitely run in different friend groups. When when I see him wear that Kershaw All Star jersey, it does throw me off because it's Showpod's colors, and I'm just like, but it's it's Kershaw, and you're in brown colors, right? Where for me, it just would have popped more if it was a Dodgers uniform with the All Star, uh, you know, patch on it. So. That to me, that that's more of the stuff that I want to collect. I if I'm gonna have something that I want to look back on, I want the Dodgers jersey and I want that all-star patch on it because look, this stand, it's not just a regular jersey, this is an all-star jersey. And National League with my little my players like logo on the sleeve, that does nothing for me. Like I I I already know my team's part of the National League. Like I want I want to have Dodgers on my chest. Like that I just Whatever, Manfred loves it. So, you know, let's go with the generic look. Nike has a 10-year deal, so we're going to see these through 2029. I wonder if the numbers have been made public the last year that they sold jerseys that had the all-star patch on it, but it was still the team's uniform. And compared to sales to when they first changed to the teams wearing all the same uniform. Because wasn't it? Uh, I feel like in Colorado they still had – didn't they still have their own jerseys or am I just I, recreating history in my, in my head? Cause I feel like when they were doing like the interviews and whatnot, like you could see the different teams, but I, I could just be revisionist his, history in this. Honestly, I don't remember when they made the change, but I, I miss was the last three years. Is in the last three years. That's when they made the change so it, to the- so that. So that would be, that would be Seattle, um, LA and then whoever did it, because 2020 got canceled. I don't know. So it was in 2021. It. Yeah. Was it Pittsburgh? Or oh, that's a good question. But wow. before if that, we only if we only had something that we could use to look up information that if we only didn't we had know. tiny handheld computers or something. Maybe they'll invent that one day. All right, go ahead and vamp while I look this up because. I, is, I it, know is it it's, bothering it, you? It's not bothering me, but I know it's probably bothering some people. Uh, okay. That well, was 2021 was Colorado. Okay. So you were right. So, well, but were they wearing <laughs> them that year? 22, 23? No. So then they were all probably in the same jersey. So I must be thinking of before the pandemic then. So the pandemic. So thanks, pandemic. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> we, thanks lost, we lost players weekend and the jerseys for, for the all-star game. Um, I will say this as a 
total non sequitur, still all-star game related. Um, Theoscar, when he did address the media yesterday, he did throw in his hat for the home run derby. So Dave Vasse did end up asking him like, hey, you know, you've been talking about this. Is this the official? Like, are you saying you want to do this? And Theoscar was like, yeah. So if he gets asked, he wants to do it. Do you believe in the curse of the home run derby? I don't know. See, I'm more data driven. If I like if you show me data and they're saying there's no data behind it, then I don't know. Dave Roberts actually got asked that yesterday and he was saying he has he doesn't care one way or another, but he doesn't believe in basically, you know, the curse or what, whatever we're calling it. The the curse of the home run derby. He didn't uh, he didn't call it that, but um, he said he said he has no preference. Um, he said hopefully it works out. Um his swing suits it. So Dave Roberts was very complimentary toward the Oscar. Um, you, you brought up Dave Roberts. So that let, that gives us a perfect segue, segue into this next uh, topic. I accidentally set that up. Yeah, you did. Good job. I see what you did there. <laughs> accidentally. Uh, so Dave Roberts was a guest on uh, Dodgers territory, uh, which is a new show hosted by uh, Clint Basias and, and, and Alana Rizzo. And Clint asked uh, Dave Roberts a question about social media. And I, I want to play Dave Roberts's response. So please uh, bear with my technical uh, prowess here. I'm going to oh, try to, if we were going to do this, we could have prepped it and I could have brought I didn't, it up. I didn't want to do this to you. So let's see. Okay. All right. Here we go. And now it's thinking. So, yeah, maybe I'm not doing a very good job of this. So, I don't know. Maybe something's going on with the internet and it's not. Okay. Well, uh, okay. Here we go. Oh, is to try to help guys be great young men, uh, appreciate being a major league ball player, what that entails, the responsibility, and help us win baseball games. And so when you get people kind of sounding off um, that don't have all the information, um, that are speaking about exit velocity, um, and don't talk about the little things that help you win baseball games, it just makes my job harder. Um, but that's part of it. And uh, as far as a coach, I talked to Bruce Bochy, and he's back, and he's a Hall of Fame uh, manager, and he's like, you know, it's never been harder to manage nowadays because of the scrutiny um, on social media. So I guess sometimes for me, Clint, I try not to give these people, these trolls, uh, more power than they think they already have. And so, um, but it's out there, it, it's real, and you got to sort of manage it. But my most important thing is to the players and to the organization, the city of Los Angeles. My so I, I wanted to bring that up, Amy, because um, I find it to be a very, I, um, I really um, appreciate For the record, that clap was not only for your low tech capabilities, because look at <laughs> us, we duct tape, like that was like a literal copy and paste, like cutting with scissors and taping it on. The look at us. Look but, at hey, us. That sound quality sounded like Dave was on our show. Good job. Excellent job. And, and that was for Dave Roberts, too. I, I really appreciate his candor. I think Dave Roberts gets uh, sometimes. I think he really gets the the sh a raw deal uh, because I feel a lot of times he is more honest with us than other people would be. Um, I got to go into the visitors' uh, dugout one day. I think it was last homestand or the homestand before, and there is a stark contrast with how how different managers address the media. So, a hundred percent agree with you there. <laughs> Yeah. So look, I, I, I found it to be an, an, a fascinating topic because I technically am one of those trolls that he is referring to. And this is something that in a sense, I feel like Dave Roberts doesn't need social media to do his job, right? He can do his job without social media. However, Okay. This is one of you. You came out with the fancy butt. All right. No, no. This is what I find interesting is he doesn't need social media. He can stay off of it. However, the question is, how much of it does he need to be aware because of the fact that there might be someone who a reporter brings up a question from a topic that goes viral on social media? So now Roberts has to answer a question like you and I have been in scrums where people have asked questions and we roll our eyes and we're just like, really, bro? 
you're gonna ask this like yeah I, I think you saw you witnessed once one in like where someone was asking something from like three years ago and you're just like what the hell man what what, what, are, you, what are we doing like how is this relevant to what's going on and that is the age of social media and i find it fascinating that he brought up bruce bochi because Bochi is the one that gets credit for being old school and that he doesn't go by the numbers and that, you know, this is the reason why Bochi is so successful and has won four World Series because he, he's old school. What what did you think about that? The, the, his answer to that question and the fact that, I mean, technically we are social media. So I, I'm not going to say you're a troll. I'm keeping it for myself. I, I'm the troll. I, I loved I loved everything that he said. I, I hadn't seen this earlier. So when you told me we were going to be discussing this, I was a little confused. Like, what what clip? What what thing? What time? Who said what where? And then when you sent it to me, like, I found myself just like when we you played it just now, like, just nodding. Like, this is exactly how I feel about social media. Like, I think it's I think it's a necessary evil. I think in a lot of ways, like, there's a lot of us on Twitter that think it's a cesspool, but at the same time, it's a necessary evil because that's like the fastest place to get your baseball information, to connect with people. So there are pros and cons on both sides. I totally agree with what he what he was saying. Um, speaking of scrums, I that was a question I asked him on Saturday because somebody did bring up, hey, you're starting rotation, you know, what 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 about the slump? And he's like, well, we're in one now. And what I, I ended up asking him like, well, what do you do to bolster players? Like there's nothing you can do really to take them out of it. I mean, they're in it. They're going to do their best to get out of it on their own. You guys have all the, re like if anybody has resources, resources, it's a baseball team. So they're going to get out of it when they can. Um, but his answer kind of mirrored what he said on, on Dodger territory was he likes to remain positive and optimistic. He's more critical about the lack of preparation and little mistakes that they should be able to manage. So if guys are playing hard, he's right behind them, right with them. And that's kind of how I view watching baseball, how I view watching this game, because me and another fan are probably not going to agree if they want to tear a player down, if they want to what if everything to the, to the nth degree about a game. Because if you tell me that Mookie Betts or Freddie Freeman or Shohei or any of those guys go up to that plate with anything less than their best, even when they're not hitting, like we definitely don't watch the game the same and that's okay, but we probably don't have a lot to talk about. Cause I'm not going to tear. I don't, I don't have any desire to tear my team down. I want to enjoy watching them. So the fact that he came out saying that a lot of people don't have the bigger picture, they don't, even the media doesn't get the bigger picture. There are plenty of people who get upset that, well, they didn't tell us this about the IL stint or what happened One, they may not know. And two, they don't owe us an explanation. So I just, I, I feel like we can all have kind of a symbiotic relationship in this respect, or we can have a contentious one and everybody gets to decide how they want to go forward on that journey. And that's going to be a different decision for everybody. I, I, I think you hit it right on the nose uh, in the sense of it is and in terms of how necessary it is because, it, but here's the problem that I have, Amy. And that is, yeah, I get a lot of my information from Twitter, especially when it's news related. But now, especially with Twitter, when I start seeing feeds of people that I don't follow and then I end up seeing stuff that I don't want to see. Yeah, it's hard to just like, hey, just forget what you just saw. And it's just like and that's how I see. I see a lot of criticism. That's how I end up finding out that, oh, this is this is an actual thing. This is an actual narrative. I Twitter is fascinating because in a sense, how different is it from newspapers? Because newspapers, you have your beat writers. OK, you have your Jack Harris's. You have your Mike DiGiovanna's. And then newspapers have your Bill Plaschke's and your Dylan Hernandez, which is the opinion factor of it, right? There's the facts, there's the reporting, and then there's the opinion. And I think what happens with social media is that blends together, right? So all of a sudden you're reading something, you're getting the facts, but then someone is interjecting opinion into that fact. And that's when things get a little uh, convoluted. And then that's, that's where... That's the responsibility of anybody, whether we get our news off of Twitter to go fact check that. But then also you don't just go along with it. Okay. I read this. I see their perspective, but how do I feel about it? 
because you and I can read some, like even the Dave Roberts thing that you mentioned earlier, like you thought he was taking fans to task and I read it and I was like, he's reminding people, like we put our own spin on it. I guess I just, I don't know. Everybody's going to resonate with what they resonate with. I mean, that's with our, with the beat writers, with newspapers, podcasts, with, with people that they follow on Twitter. There are a ton of Dodgers accounts out there. I don't follow every single one of them. I don't, I don't like how some of them represent the team or how they represent the sport. So I don't follow them. Some of those sites have thousands, millions of followers, but they're not for me. And I think that's where, where we don't all have to take in every single bit of Dodgers or baseball or whatever media, social media, news content, we find what resonates with us. And then we also do the work of, okay, what's the truth or what's being reported. And now what do I believe instead of just taking it at face value? And I think that that is a responsibility with any kind of news, even opinion. Yes. And this is what, again, why I love having you as my partner, because you always check me uh, because it's very important to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Riggedy so, wreck yourself. Ah, I see mm -hmm. what you did there. Mm -hmm. ah, 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 I see mm -hmm. what you did there. Um, and yeah, I think there is a lot of over analysis that that is involved, and it's things catch your attention, right? And if I think if Dave Roberts would have just come out and said, you know what, I'm disappointed that Will Smith didn't didn't get uh, you know voted in, I think that's different. Then Dave Roberts saying, I'm disappointed the Dodger fans is, is one of the largest fan base because that to me then is adding a little more to it. It's making it a little more specific. This is now directing it directly at Dodger fans. And I know we talked about this earlier in the episode where it's like, so Dodger fans are supposed to outnumber all 29 other, you know, and I, they're I think entitled you take to the their opinion. And, and he's entitled to how he wants to say it. And I'm not, again, I'm not saying you heard it wrong or we just heard it differently, but I think I also take his character into, into play. And I know that he usually has the good of everybody in mind. So I didn't take it with any, like, not malice, but ill intent involved. And it was just no, like, I, Hey, you guys like, yeah, vote him in. Like to me, I just brushed it off. Like, yeah, he's encouraging people to vote. Maybe not how I would have worded it, but I didn't take it. I don't know. Like I just, I, I, and again, that's how we intake certain things across any social media website, whatever you take what you want and you leave it. And then you decide for, for you what works. And, and hopefully we're all doing the research on our own too, and not just taking everything at face value, because as we've both experienced, we've had our opinions on things and we've had those turned around without context, with the appropriate, without the appropriate context and had people make their own narratives. And that's that's the world that we live in right now. But if people were to do their own research and find out, oh, this is actually what they meant, or this is what this person on the internet meant, now I can make my own observations. So I think that's an important part of it. But it doesn't mean that we're all going to agree or I'll take it in the same way, just like you and I don't always hear or, or interpret things the same way. And there's nothing wrong no. with that. I, I totally agree with that. I don't think there was anything malicious on Dave Roberts's point what was missing from me from that narrative is the acknowledgement that what you just said right now, which is other people are entitled to, to their opinions mm -hmm. to sit there and say, and look, I know that it's a very close race between him and William Contreras, the numbers, I mean, William Contreras hasn't beat on average, but Will Smith hasn't beat in, in other categories. It's one of those, it could go either way. So when, yeah, you're you're fighting for your guy. You want Will Smith. You think Will Smith is who should be up there. It does feel like William Contreras then gets the short end of the stick. Like, is it easy to come out there and go, look, both of them, both of them are worthy of it. It's who the fans, this is a fan vote. It's who the fans want to see. And, like, and, and I don't remember the exact quote, but we also know that context does come into play. Like sometimes when you see stuff across media, it's the response. And we don't always see the way that the question was worded to them. I'm not saying that that's the case with this. Honestly, I don't remember off the top of my head. I just remember I didn't take any, like, I didn't think anything of it. But it, there are certain cases where you don't have the whole quote. Or was there a question prior to that that led into this one? And all we got was this one question and his answer. We don't know. So unless you're there for the whole context, that's also how narratives get kind of bent a little bit too. 
So I think I go with the whole character, especially in this case of like, eh, usually means pretty well, like let that one fly now if this is a consistent thing. Okay, you know, like mm, kind of how you're addressing fans, it's not, that's not so great. You might want to revamp that. But uh, again, I, without having all of the context, like a little harder. I think that's fair. Uh, what you just said, I think is fair, which leads me to a similar situation here. Uh, so Mookie Betts, for the second time was in the broadcast booth in with spectrum sports net la and i want to get your initial reaction to it before i bring to you, i want to point this out to you because oh here we go the first time i i saw when he was on with eric caros i thought to myself you know with his podcast and now with him coming on here uh for him to be four innings uh that first time it was much longer than I thought he was. I was like, he, he actually clearly. wasn't, he wasn't planned for that long. It wasn't supposed to be that long. Um, and that, if anybody's curious and wants to go back and listen, it was Wednesday's game, um, July 3rd, where he was in there for four innings with Joe Davis and, and Eric Carros. I, I think he's clearly planting the seeds for his career, his, his post playing career. He, I think he's definitely going to go into broadcasting once he is done playing. I mean, he did help with the World Series coverage for Fox. Was it last year or was it the year before? Mm, I don't know. I, 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 I mean, don't... planting the seeds, if he's doing all this stuff, I don't think he's planting seeds. I think he's like, he's made his intention clear. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, I mean, it's something he, he, he wants he, to do, which good he, for him. Uh, so what were your thoughts on it? Oh, I loved it. I loved every second of it. I was like eating up the broadcast and I'm not usually one who like, cause they would split screen every so often. And I hate that, like put the game on, but I feel like he just did such a good job complimenting those two, the way that the, the conversation went, it was awesome. I loved all four innings. And then the fact that he did it again yesterday. Um, so, or sorry, not yesterday, by the time some of you are listening to this, it would have been Sunday's game. So July 7th, um, he actually stayed in for all nine innings on Sunday. And yeah. I think it was somebody in the press box mentioned, Hey, Mookie's in there again. I'm watching the game. I pulled out my phone and I pulled up Sportsnet on, on my phone. And I was listening to the broadcast while I was watching the game because I wanted to hear what he was talking about because it was just, it was so engaging. I, the whole broadcast to me, it was very delightful. I, I loved it. So so this is why I wanted to bring these two stories together because I wanted to tie it in together. So for the most part, I think I saw universal praise for Mookie uh, coming in uh, into in, into the broadcast booth. He does everything well. <laughs> but then I saw something and, and I found myself answer, thinking, is this a legitimate question that he is posing? So Howard Cole, for those of you who aren't familiar with Howard Cole, he, Howard Cole seems to be just a very unhappy person. And I know that he loves baseball. He loves watching it. But he is very critical uh, on Twitter. And sometimes, you know, his feet is just a little too much for me. Why do you uh, follow yeah. it? But that's one of those things where I'm like, I don't follow Howard Cole. <laughs> but when I go on Twitter looking up Dodger news, Howard Cole's tweets. Oh, and this is what I was telling you about. Like, I can't unsee what I just saw. Mute him or block yeah. him. Done and I, done. I, I, <laughs> I just solved I, your problem. <laughs> thank you. I, I appreciate that. Um, like he goes in hard on, on like certain players and all did that. Did he stuff. go in hard on Mookie? He did. He mm -hmm. went in hard on Mookie, but I wanted You're to You're like, I opinion. really wish I could unsee this, but here, let me share it with all of you. Go well, on. because I want to be fair and be like, not just be like, ah, Howard, you know, be dismissive of people. Like when people give another point of view, I really try to see that other where they're coming from to see if there's anything legitimate there. And the thing that he brought up was not that Mookie was bad in the booth or anything like that. It was the fact that Mookie was in the booth at all. His argument was that Mookie should have been in the dugout with his teammates. I, and that's why that's what I find. That's to me what was interesting, because when we think of players that have been hurt for and I, I get it, you can't compare them because Mookie have you like you said, it's not seeds. Mookie has made it very clear. I think he wants a broadcasting career once he's done. But. Would you ever see Clayton Kershaw do something like that? 
does he want to? Is somebody and, denying and, him the right? And, and that's the difference, right? I don't think Kershaw wants a broadcasting career. So they did, but, they did say on Wednesday that it was Mookie's idea to go up there. So he's the one who wanted it. wasn't like they invited him like, hey, we know you're on the IL. You know, do you, you know, do you want to, do you not want to? It was his idea. He requested it. So uh, I guess so I don't, I don't understand. If a player is injured, if a player is injured, you don't think they have an obligation of being in the dugout with the rest of the team. Why? Some players are with their families. Some like not every injured player is in that dugout. What? Who who's upset about this? Is the team? Did the team complain about this? And that's why no, Howard no, Cole is no. saying it, or is he just coming up this, with his own? This was Howard Cole's observation, and then I went down a rabbit hole and I saw some of the comments, and it seemed other fans noticed the same thing and said, "You know what? I do find it a little odd that he but is up in the booth and not in the dugout for, for two games, for two of his injured games." like what what are we talking about here like did is the team gonna put it like get out pitchforks and be like come down we want you in the dugout with us like if he can do some good and in like if him especially with what we've seen we need to see more diversity in the sport we need to get more different kind of fans if having him even in the booth for four innings one day nine innings another day gets more people involved in the game because they like him they look up to him that's that's just a boon for the sport. If if his now if his teammates are like, if we're all down here, you have to be down here. Well then, okay, I guess an argument can be made. But are is that just more of a misery loves company type of thing? And not saying the Dodgers are doing that, but who cares? Like this is where I feel like some people make mountains out of molehills. Who cares? If it like, <laughs> how is this even? Howard Cole or whatever his name is is allowed to have his opinion. But who is Mookie hurting? Right. And, and but this uh, this is how I wanted to tie it into the Dave Roberts thing when Dave Roberts was saying about dealing with trolls, how are you aware of it? It's like there are these narratives that become established. Now, you're not going to make everybody I, happy. Now, would I be surprised if later on in the season someone asked Mookie that question and says, "Hey, do you think, how do your teammates feel about you being in the booth? Ask and them. Like said, this, this is a non, like, I'm sure it's a non-issue because I really don't think anybody on the team has an issue with him being up in the booth. But that goes back to, like, when everybody was asking each of the players about Shohei and Jay Hayes, like, just go ask him. Like, I don't know why you're asking me. Go ask him the question. If... It, People are going to ask their questions. People, especially if people want to generate negativity or whatever you want to file that under, you can ask the question. I would have no problem if Mookie was like, if he blew it off. T because to me, like that's, you're trying to get a reaction. And, and that's the same thing with, I don't understand trolls. I mean, I get the concept. Don't get me wrong. I understand it. But it's like, if you really don't like something or you don't agree, just don't listen, don't watch, don't subscribe. Done and done. But if you are going to go the extra step to make other people miserable just to do it, then you have, like, good for you. But I'm not going to let that bring me down. I hope Mookie doesn't let him bring it down, and I hope our team doesn't. Like, it sounds like Dave Roberts isn't because those people are existing out there to just be disgusting. And, hey, enjoy your life. Have the day you deserve, you know? Exactly. Exactly. Um, that's going to do it for this show. Uh, look, I would love to hear your opinions on this thing, um, in terms of anything that we talked about, because after all, we are a show on the internet where we discuss cheese that's going on in, in Dodger Twitter. And I know a lot of people are just like, look, all I care about baseball, none of this stuff is, is important to me. Uh, but it is fascinating to me because like you said, it's a necessary evil where are everybody, where are we getting injury updates? Where are we getting information that really does impact the team? We're getting it from social media. So to a certain extent, just turn it. If you, you know, like everyone says, it's like, if you don't like social media, you know, stay off of it. And it's like, all right, I'm going to stay off of it. And then yeah, you but don't you know can, what's going can, on. But you can curate your feed too. Like on Twitter, I only follow baseball stuff. The majority of it Dodgers. If I see something I don't like, I block it. I mute it. 
like done and done. Like I'm not going to, the world is already a negative enough place. I'm not going to let anything into my sphere that is just going to bring that down. So if I see a post that I don't like and, and that, that account, that's what they're all about done out. I like, I'm, I'm not going to entertain it. I just, it, we, it, again, it comes down to choices. You guys hear that? That's a wonderful lesson that, that uh, La Señorita Cuevas is teaching us today. Just mute it, everybody. Just mute it. <laughs> you don't yeah. have to read it. You don't have to go down the rabbit hole. Um, That's right. I'll leave you with two of the quotes that I love from Mookie on Wednesday. So I'm paraphrasing because I don't have them exactly. But one of them was, cheer yourself on. No one's going to treat you better than you. And the other was, be in the best headspace for your next opportunity. Like, I appreciated his positivity on both of those broadcasts. And I think we could use more of that in baseball and in the world. So kudos to Mookie. Especially on this show, right? Because I'm the downer. I bring it all down for you. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> you get to watch and experience baseball however you want. You don't have to experience it my way. I'm just going to tear bear stare the heck out of you, but that's fine. That's right. That's how we balance each other. We're looking <laughs> out for each other on this, right? Uh, okay. Uh, any last words before we wrap things up? No, be in the best headspace for your next opportunity, guys and gals. I like those quotes. I, I I really do. Okay. If you guys have been listening to us on the audio portion, please make sure you're subscribed to the podcast. Uh, rate us, write us a review, help spread the word. If you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel. Hit that notification button. Give us a thumbs up. Leave us comments. We love engaging with you. And most importantly, make sure you're following us on social media, on X at BB Shangri LA, on Instagram, YouTube, and Twitch at Baseball Shangri LA. Nos despedimos con un beso. She is Amy Cuevas. I am Juan Ramírez. Amy, say goodbye to the people. Goodbye, people.